Alright guys, what is up? My name is Ikizoid and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Now for today's episode we're going to be doing the full Ayama route for the Andromeda 6 DLC Star Cross Lovers. And now we have done all of the other characters for this DLC, all of the other routes, but that does not mean that we're going to be ending the series, that is far from the truth, so we're going to be doing a lot more uh, episodes of the Andromeda 6 series and I do actually have uh, some upcoming surprise videos that are related to Andromeda 6 so make sure you are subscribed to stay notified for all of my future videos and also there's the upcoming episode 6 for the main game which is going to be coming out very very soon so stay tuned for that one as well and also one last thing before we begin if you guys want me to do another visual novel or another game like any game out there you, if you want me to play please leave me a comment down below in the comment section so I can know what you guys want to see me play. Now let's just start and jump right into the episode, okay. <laughs> and Ayame is actually on the front cover this time, these are like randomly generated, so it's really fun that for the, like it's very fitting that we have Ayame on the front cover as well, so let's just start. Enter your name, our name is Ziki, and she, her pronouns, and we're going to be playing as a, tel a Telari species, oh my god, <laughs> well, my throat is a little bit dry. Uh, and Bash is like, I'm telling you, I did it last time. And by the way, in the previous episode with the Bash route, we skipped this first intro section of the game. Whatever, we're gonna be doing like the full playthrough. And Ayama says, you're lying, I haven't seen you do it in weeks, and they're talking about the laundry again. I stopped in my tracks, frozen, having stumbled upon an extremely heated argument between Bash and Ayama in the corridor. His attempt at feigning innocence is failing miserably, and Ayame looks nothing short of pissed at whatever they're squabbling about. After having gotten to know them better over the past week or so, I'm certain the topic of their argument could vary anywhere from someone having left a dirty sock on the floor to one of them having cheated in a mecha fight. And we all know that it's not the case, but still, we have known them for only one week and we know them so well because, like, they're the most introverted, uh, extroverted characters, I mean to say. And they haven't noticed me yet, and I consider tiptoeing back to my room to keep it that way, but curiosity gets the best of me. Then maybe you should get your ears checked, huh? Maybe you should shut that fat mouth and quit lying. Ayame pushes against Bash's chest, and by the twitch of his lips I can see he's holding back a grin. <laughs> Somehow that only angers Aya further. He looks down at her, towering above the tiny kid alpha. And by the way, if you guys don't know, uh, Ayame is the shortest out of all of them, out of all the crew. So she's like half of Calderon size, almost, so you can imagine that huge size difference. She's from the Kitalfan planet, so she is also like an aquatic, like semi-aquatic uh, character, or like <coughs> species. These little gills that you see on the side of her neck, that, those are like for her breathing underwater. She's a really interesting character, she really is one of those characters that I really wanted to romance in the main game, at the very very beginning. First of all, because she's very beautiful, and second of all, I really enjoy her personality. She is very much uh, like um, similarly to Bash. She is very outgoing, very expressive, very extroverted, and I really enjoy that about her. I think she's like really, really, really fun to be around. So uh, we're definitely going to be flirting with her in this little episode. So uh, I'm gonna step in between them before she has the chance to murder him where he stands. Whoa, 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 what's going on, we say? Aya turns on me the silvery ends of her hair, whipping around her face as she does so. It's Bash's turn to do the laundry and he's trying to palm it onto me. Again. I am telling you, little squirt, I did it last time. Ask Damon, he saw me, and she's not gonna believe what Damon is saying, so... She scoffs at him and folds her arms over her chest that sound dark and deliberate. Yeah, right, as if I was just anything that comes out of his mouth. Trust issues much? Have you even met Damon? Well, I... Okay, okay, now. Stop fighting. <laughs> I step between the two of them to break it up, one hand on Bash's chest and the other on Ayama's shoulder to keep them from tearing each other apart. It seems harmless enough for now, but I'm worried things could escalate quickly where these two are involved. Why don't you just, I don't know, flip a coin or something? And they don't have a coin, obviously, but they're gonna play rock, paper, scissors for it. Her whole design, the purple, I'm loving it, really suits her, like her, her hair. Her skin tone really, really suits her. So Bash thinks for a moment and pats down his pockets, coming up empty, and Aya just shrugs. Letting out a defeated sigh, I try something else. Rock, paper, scissors then. I like the way you think, kid. 
Bastion is back to Aya, the tilt of his lips, nothing short of cocky. Rock lizard robot. You're the only one who thinks that's a real thing. We're going classic. Fine with me. You ready to lose pocket rocket? Bring it on, Tin Man. I love this little, like, last line between the two of them. And I smile to myself, feeling a little smug at having come up with an amiable solution and head back to my room to relax. And now we're going to be waking up from a nap, hearing a shriek, something is going to happen, like, um, down in the hallway, and we already know what it is. All of the laundry is going to be, you know, turned pink. <laughs> so, a shriek wakes me from the nap I have been taking, even though... That doesn't really warrant a shriek, but maybe, I don't know who shrieked, was it Rayona, was it Ayame, I don't know, maybe it was like Demon, who knows. <laughs> so followed by the sound of heavy footsteps going past my door, I bolt upright, listening hard, though the noises disappear as fast as they came and my heart pounds in my chest, wondering what the hell is going on. Alright, when I hit the button to slide open the door of my room with a trembling hand, I peek my head into the corridor, glancing around, and we find nothing there. Leaving the door shut behind me, I tiptoe through the corridors, ears strained for the smallest sound, voice, anything. A feeling of dread worms its way through my stomach, something could have happened while I was sleeping. Something bad. And it did happen, but I wouldn't call it bad, I would call it like very comical, obviously. But it's only when I get closer to the docks that I stop pausing by the door to hear better. Her voices are coming from the deck below me, so muffled that I can barely hear them, but they're there nonetheless. I descend the stairs slowly, carefully, trying my best not to give my presence away. And we see the crew downstairs, Calderon is very, very pissed off about this, so whoever's responsible for this is going to have hell to pay, he says. Let's just take a breath and look at the facts, June says. June is right, Rayona says. Instead of jumping to accusations, let's handle this logically. Or I could just bleed it out of him. Damon? Alright, fine. Don't need to give me that look, dog. The knives are already away. <laughs> I don't care how, but we're settling this now. Recognizing the voices, I creep down the steps a little more, at last seeing the crew gathered in a sort of circle within the large space below. There's no one else there, no threat and no danger. Nothing except the crew of the Andromeda Six themselves. Relief floods my lungs, releasing the breath I hadn't realized I had been holding. The hangar doors are open, giving a view of Apple's junkyard behind them all, and the mid-afternoon sun hanging overhead. And I wonder if the doors, like, my little detective mind is, like, going around a little bit in my head, so... If the doors are open, could that mean that the laundry could have been done by Oppo themselves? Because Oppo could have easily, like, snuck inside the ship... Or because we don't have any security, we just have the, the six crew members and us. Uh, so I'm keeping that in mind. Maybe Oppo was the one responsible. Maybe it was Aya because we know it wasn't Bash. Now he would have confessed to us in the previous episode if that was true, if it was him. Uh, but maybe it was Oppo or maybe it's just like a random accident. I don't know, but I really want to find out. Maybe it was Ayame so we can see what's going to happen. Uh, so let's just continue with the game. And, uh, and then I notice uh, finally what seems to be the cause of the crew's distress. The uniforms are all pink. From magenta to rose, raspberry to blush. And look how the music changes here once the, the, once the tension is all that like, disappeared. We get to like finally sense a feeling of relief. And uh, the crew's uniforms have all been turned into a palette of various alarming shades of pink. I cannot hold back the bubble of laughter that escapes me, and when they finally notice my presence, the captain is the first one to scowl. Nice to see someone finds this funny, Calderon says. Oh, come on, you all look so <laughs> pretty. <laughs> Descending the stairs, I come to a stop in front of them, arms folded over my chest. Demon, I may need to borrow that knife after all. I knew they would come, they knew you would come to your senses eventually. And what a coincidence, I've got two of them on me right now. Wanna take turns, or should we flank them? Whichever causes the most pain. <laughs> I love how edgy they are. And then again, Rayona and June as the most like uh, grounded or like down to earth people. How are we going to return? Uh, how about to return to the problem at hand? The, uh, June says. And Rayona is like, I agree. You won't find me cleaning up the mess you leave behind again. <laughs> Settle down, you two. The captain and his second in command narrow their eyes to the level headed pair, but surprisingly settle down from their plans to resort to violence. 
And Bash is like, all right, all right, look, we can start with this like civilized people. Bash steps forward, shielding me from the captain's glacial glaze as well as Damon's indecipherable one. I raise an eyebrow when he steps behind Rayona, and it takes me more than a moment to catch on to his plan when he suddenly points a finger at Aya and yells. It was her! <laughs> a liar! And Rayona is already like realizing what's happening. She shrieks as she becomes the human shield between Aya and Bash, saved just in time from Aya's pounce as Calderon grabs the catalophone around the waist and drags her back, ignoring her kiss of fury. Bash lets out a sigh of relief when it lasts all of three seconds before Rayona is on him instead, her long fingers locked around his bionic wrist. Sebastian, tell me the truth right now. He, she's like, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you right, the knives are on the way to go. A demon snarky input, Rayona and Calderon exchange a look, and a wave of amusement washes over me at the sight of them trying to rein in a bunch of badly misbehaved children. And, well, there's no way in hell I'm going to be seen out there wearing this. And we do have, like, spare uniforms, so... I don't know, Cal, I think it kind of suits you, Damon adds. Keep calling me that, Damon, and I will make you regret it. Oh, promise? <laughs> one of these days, you two are finally going to get into an actual fist fight over one of those childish arguments, and I really don't want to get involved in your nonsense. Both of you to assume your involvement is needed. <laughs> Cannot deny the thought of Damon laying down a fair fight is similar to none. All is fair in love and war. Calderon glowers at uh, Damon with murder in his eyes and June lets out a long sigh. That's why I will be forced to intervene after all. Now that wouldn't be fair. Damon is such an edgy little boy. Oh my god. Okay, stop, Rayona says. There should be some spare uniforms in the hold as for these. She gestures to her dress in the pink ombre color that stains it. There's a dry cleaners in the city. All we need to do is take them there and the problem will be solved. Obviously, Aya should go since you know she's the one who caused the problem in the first place, Bash says. And Ayama is very defensive at this. Sebastian, I swear by all of the gods, if you say that one more time, I'm gonna let you build that water tank just so you can so I can freaking drown you in it, she says. You know what? I agree with Ayame. We have heard enough from you already. <laughs> Bash slams against, a hand against his chest in an exaggerated display of offense. And uh, what's happening next? Uh, well, someone has to go and he volunteers. There we go. And we're going to volunteer. And Damon is like very, very much uh, not up for the task. So, sounds like you want the honor, Damon, Calderon says. Gotta pass on that. It's my day off for the one you so graciously gave me, remember? The scowl on the captain's face grows even deeper, regret practically dripping from him. I'm gonna volunteer, and I'm going to get to pick a Yame, so that is really exciting. I wonder what we're going to, what our activities are going to be during the festival of Valen with a Yame specifically. Because with each of these characters, it's like a different kind of story, it's a different celebration. Uh, for example, Calderon hates the celebration, but maybe our, uh, like a Yame maybe is going to be very much into it, just like Rayona is. We'll see what happens. And I might as well get it over with, we think to ourselves. I cannot see any of them willingly giving up their free time to work on something as futile as laundry. It is not like I have anything better to do, and I did agree on pulling my own weight around here, which is true, we did agree on that with Calderon when we spoke earlier with him in the main game. And we say, I will go, I would like to see more of the city, this will be a good opportunity. The relief that flows through the rest of the crew is almost palpable at my response, even Damon, who had mumbled something eigenly similar to Obviously, under his breath, as I spoke up, seems relieved someone stepped forward. That makes it easier, he says. Calderon, I mean. You're not going on your own, though. Here we go, Ayame says. She mutters under her breath to the side, trying to make herself even smaller at that. Somebody needs to go with you. I will give you the choice as to who. And we'll be choosing Ayame. So, clicking on her, almost without thinking, my gaze falls upon the pilot, shrinking to the side, and a defeated sound escapes her when she notices. <laughs> that settles it then. Calderon turns to the rest of the crew, and Aya turns to me. Let's get out of these hideous things and gather them here so they can get it done. I'm glad you enjoy my company, but to do laundry? Come on, Ziki, why me? Because you did it, Bash says. Shut up before I make you do it all on your own. Bash goes silent as he leaves the room after Calderon with Rayona in tow. June throws just a sympathetic smile before leaving and uh, soon we're all alone on the docks. Well, no point whining about it now, huh? Sorry, you were just the first person that came to mind, so... 
Don't sweat it. Uh, I kind of knew this was coming. At least I can I get to go with you. The way she phrases that makes me suspicious. I, uh, who won rock, paper, scissors earlier? Who do you think won? Anyway, be right back. Let me just get out of these and I'll meet you here. I think she won. Or like maybe a uh, bash one and she got she, she was the one who got to do the laundry. So I know that she doesn't give me a straight answer, but before I can question her again, she gives me a quick wink and saunters off down the, to the hold. And I'm left on my own, leaning against a stack of crates where I draw my fingers as I wait for her to come back. So I think I might be right about it that Bash or Ayana were the ones who were responsible. So maybe Aya will confess to us that she was the one because she is like... Her favorite color might be something close to pink. For example, she's like all in uh, purple. So that's that's close to pink, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyways, time passes, seconds turning into minutes. And they grow more and more impatient and a little bit frustrated. So there's only so long that the stark metal walls of the ship can hold my interest. I am not certain how much time has passed exactly. But eventually it seems like more than what is needed for a simple outfit change. Maybe she's trying to slack a little bit, so pushing myself off of the crates, I carve away through the docks towards where I last saw Aya, checking every door on the way before coming to a stop in front of a small door located on the far wall. There is no response when I knock, but this is the only place left for her to be. She would have had to walk past me to leave the docks. I'm gonna knock harder. Is she even in this room? Hello, Aya? No response comes from the other side and I cannot help but wonder if she's just ignoring me or if she's truly not in here. I've already gone over all the other rooms I could think of around here. This has to be it, but then... Oh. Ayame? It's Aya! <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Realizing it's becoming easier and easier to understand how she operates brings a low trickle out of me. At least now I know where she is. Can I come in? Yeah, sure, no point in hiding out anymore. A muffled sound follows her words and I push the button next to the door. I can only assume she's cursing at herself for being unable to sneak her way out of our mission. And she's... <laughs> oh my god, she's so pretty! <laughs> I am still changing her clothes when I walk in, taking off her awfully pink jacket. Oh, sorry, I, real I didn't realize you were getting changed. I'm about done, just gotta take this jacket off, but apparently not only did it turn pink, it shrank. You mean to tell me you didn't sneak into the storage room to hide? A sneaky smile twists her lips for a moment in a smug expression, being swiftly replaced by a quite obvious, uh, quite dubious shock. I would never, she says. You sound about as dis as believable as Damon when he says that. Okay, now that's just mean. I like to believe I'm a better actress than him when it comes to acting sorry, thank you very much. Not with that smug smile on your face, though. Choking on a laugh, she finally succeeds in taking off her jacket, tossing it aside to quickly slip on a clean, unblemished one. And we get to see her again dressed in her beautiful little outfit. Can you really blame me for hiding? Doing laundry is so boring. <laughs> when you sort of brought it upon yourself, so... You cannot prove that. What would I cause trouble to myself? Is I saw how much trouble I was having with that thing just now. And we're going to flirt with, him, with her definitely, so... Uh, we can ask her who messed up the laundry, but that is not the flirting option. And I do want to use all of our flirting options here to like strong uh, make our bond a little stronger. But maybe I'm gonna say, maybe it wasn't that the, the jacket was too small, like implying something else, you know, something else. <laughs> so I'm gonna say that. She still had an undershirt on, but that cleavage shouldn't be hidden if, uh, couldn't be hidden if she tried to, and I don't think she did. I see, she says. With cat-like grace, Ayama steps towards me, getting close enough that with the slightest lean of her body, my eyes had become unable to settle on her face without dripping to her chest. Her perfume floods my senses when I breathe in, and I cannot tell if my body is burning up from embarrassment or something else entirely. Soft, slender fingers make their way over my arm. A chill runs over my body, causing my eyes to snap back up to hers, and I find myself trapped in, her, in their violet ocean. My eyes are up here. I am sorry, not that I mind the attention, but you just look like you ended up tangled in our, in, with our laundry from how pink you are. <laughs> What the little cleavage is too much for you? I certainly hope not. Before I can even respond, Aya's hand leaves my arm as she throws a wink towards me before turning around and picking up her clothes. So sh uh, shall we? We don't want the captain to lose uh, yet another year from his life. Acting as if she hadn't just pushed my self-control to its limit, Aya shoots me a smile as she makes her way past me and back outside, holding the door open. 
pushing down all the tingling that sh the, sh the she devil caused to my body, I take a deep breath and go after her, struggling to focus on what the captain told us to do. The small laugh under her breath as I walk past her is unmistakable. That woman will tease me to death if I let her. As we make our way through the corridors with Ayame sliding in random comments about the ship, I cannot help but wonder just how far it is we're going. Is the track cleaners very far from here? Not really, a couple of blocks away from Oppo's club, I think. Cannot really say I've been there much before, but I'm pretty good with directions, so we'll be good. I mean, she's a pilot, you would hope she's good with directions, you know? <laughs> and I'm actually, personally, like, in real life, I'm very, very good with directions and, like, orientation, so I can definitely, uh, like, relate to her in that sense. So, it would be a lie to say I had been worried about getting lost with her as a guide. She's the pilot of the ship, her sense of direction is pretty hard to beat, in my opinion. The docks are much more crowded than when I first came here. It seems Oppo's crew has already loaded some boxes in here. I wonder what they are. Food, medicine, spare parts, weapons, maybe? Living like a mercenary still sounds so foreign to me. Still, the, no, uh, the more I know Ayame, the more I see how being a mercenary isn't something necessarily bad if you have a good head on your shoulders, or so I hope. I had dumpster laundry in a bag with the others, not bothering to fold it up before tying up the pack with a professional-looking li professional knot. And I'm gonna say let's share the load. I can see there are two packs by her feet. It's only fair if we split the load, so I put it out of my hand for her to pass me one of them. Give me one of those, we should share the load. Okie dokie, she says. With unexpected ease, Aya throws me a pack and slings the other over her shoulder. It is not too heavy, so I follow suit and put it over my own shoulder. We should be fine to carry these to and from the dry cleaners if it's truly not that far away. All set. I nod, and I quickly opens the landing door next to us, letting us make our way outside. And we're going to see the beautiful Nose Vega background. I love this, I love how like, uh, everything looks so makeshift, everything looks so like handmade. I really love this, I mean, the, like the buildings look like they were literally handmade, or like maybe from clay or something, I don't know. But it looks very, very sci-fi, definitely. Kind of reminds me of Star Wars too, but in like a good way, like I'm not trying to compare the two, I'm just saying like, you know, you guys know what I mean, so. I just the bag on my pa a back, I just the bag on my back as we make our way into Nose Vega, the ship being landed on the small strip behind one of Apple's shops. The city is awfully packed compared to the last time I was here. Street vendors, food carts, and dozens upon dozens of people take up the streets, making it hard to walk more than a few inches apart from Aya. Dried flowers, petals, a lace scattered over the sidewalks, giving off a subtle floral scent that manages to slightly overpower the dry air. Is there some sort of celebration going on today, we ask? I'm not sure... Oh, there is! It totally slipped my mind, it's the festival of Valen! What's this festival about? It comes from some ancient human tradition, and today love is celebrated. Her response is quite animated, but I'm not sure if she's excited about the perspective of celebrating love or by the festival activities themselves. I'm gonna say it sounds cool because, hello, Valentine's Day is like super cool, I really love it personally. So this seems like a cool festival if you are, well, in love, and we definitely are in love, so... She's like, what? Hell no, we don't need to be in love to enjoy the festival. There are so many different things to do, should we take a look around? It's clear that Aya is trying to contain herself while talking about the festival, and I cannot deny I'm, I'm intrigued. Should we take a look while we make our way to the laundry shop? Deal. Ayame and I walk shoulder to shoulder to the crowds, her hair date, uh, darting from side to side. <laughs> I read dating there. <laughs> As she points out the main spots for me. Look, in that street they only have the game stalls. On the plaza, over there you have several food carts and over there... She certainly enjoys her festivals. I don't think I would find anyone better to guide me through it if only for her excitement as she speaks. All around us people are dressed mostly in pink, red and white. Beautiful kitalfon with wicker... Oh, kitalfon women I, uh, there should be here, I think, because in all the previous versions, like the previous routes, it was like kitalfon women. Uh, so anyways, doesn't matter. Beautiful kitalfon women with wicker baskets throw handfuls of dry petals through the air. And human and alien children run through the streets with long sticks emitting pink and purple smoke. The air smells sweet like sugar and cinnamon, and when we pass a food cart I can see it's filled with all sorts of sweets, cakes and desserts, some oddly shaped and of dubious ingredients. Aya is quick to guide me through the streets and groups of people, every time drawing me more and more into her festival vibe. I must admit I'm far too distracted by the decorations and activities to focus on our task, the idea of spending the day enjoying these festivities appealing all that much more to me. 
soon reach the white plaza and a distinctive change in the noise around us catches my attention. Instead of the loud and unclear sound of people talking and laughing around us, a joy symphony surrounds this place. Look, look, she says. I look for the spot Ayame is pointing to and I am surprised to see a parade going on right in the middle of the plaza. <coughs> it is no wonder it caught her eyes so easily. Let's take a closer look, she says, and I love how excited she is. She's so like pumped up about it. She's like really, really so such a cool person, honestly, such a, such a cool and fun person to be around. So, the smile on Aya's face is rivaled by none as she takes me by the hand and drags me along. Not that I particularly mind though. If she hadn't been on the one-to-one -to, -one to get closer, I'm certain I would have asked her if you should take a closer look. There were all kinds of people on it. Children ran around them, smoke sticks in hand, giving the whole parade an almost ethereal look. Everyone had a pink, red or white garment on, some with extravagant hats in the shape of hearts, stars or moons, and they all danced freely to the song. No rehearsed choreography, no calculated movements, just dancing. The band is standing point on the parade, uh, drums... What? The band is standing point on the parade? I, I don't think I understand that, but whatever. The band is standing point on the parade. Drums and triangles and all sorts of instruments I can't recognize from the distance, working in perfect harmony, harmony to create a song that fills the spectators with a warm feeling of joy. I cannot speak for the others, but I can speak for myself, and it's probably the happiest I've been in a while. Oh my god, that's so fun! That's so nice! Oh my god. And we're with Ayame, who we're going to flirt with. And again, like in the previous... Uh, or like in the main playthrough of the game, I did uh, try to flirt with Ayame a lot, but then I switched over to June. So she's like one of those that really caught my eye, definitely. Uh, I enjoyed my time with the crew, the antics Aya puts up, but this feels so wholesome. Turning to the side, I see Ayame practically bouncing on her feet as we watch the parade. I'm gonna push her to dance. I'm gonna ask her to dance. Yeah, flirt with her. I'm not sure if she's holding back on my behalf, but keeping her from dancing isn't something I plan on ever doing. Can I have this dance, we say? I thought you'd never ask. Without giving me time to prepare, Ayama takes the hand I offered her and pulls me closer to, her da to the dancers, a smile as bright as the sun above us on her face. It is clear to me that my movements aren't as well executed as hers, and the weight of the laundry pack on my back hinders me slightly, despite seeming to have no effect on her, but her enthusiasm is contagious. Sooner than expected, I'm letting loose, surrendering myself to the beat, the sounds of her laughter mingling with the music and the people from the parade dancing around us. Song after song we dance, spinning and jumping and laughing. The back of my shirt has started sticking to my back with sweat, but it's not a, diff uh, not a deterrent. The energy of this moment, the joy coming from the people around us, the bliss I can see in Aya's face. I could dance for hours like this. Oh my god, that's so good and so beautiful. Unfortunately, my body doesn't agree with my mind and eventually I get far too tired to keep up with Ayame. Hey Aya, I'm gonna take the seat over there for a while. That sounds like a good idea, let's go. I wasn't expecting her to follow me, but I don't complain about the company. We swiftly make our way towards a large bench to the side of the plaza, still close enough to the parade that we can enjoy the music, but far enough to be able to talk without yelling. And by the way, am I yelling? I think I might be because uh, these headphones are like really noise cancelling. I'm sorry if it's like the sound is too loud. I hope I'm not yelling too much. So uh, Ayame says, damn, I haven't had that much fun in a long time. Really? Yeah, I mean, I go out, I have fun, but that was so freeing. Do you know what I mean? The thrill of the dance still courses through my body. No rules, no limitations, nothing holding us back. Just us and the music, our bodies moving of their own free will. I do. Almost makes you wish to hear the festival of Valen more times a year. Is it a yearly festival? Yep, the celebrations and dates vary a bit from planet to planet, but it's all got the same vibe overall. Curious about how each planet celebrates this day, I'm about to ask her when a mid-aged couple walks up to us. Excuse me, would you mind if we sat next to you? Sorry to bother, but this is the only free seat in the shade. Oh yeah, sure. They thank Ayame and take a seat next to us. They seem to be married, a human woman and a Kitalfon male. Oh, very much. Uh, no, we are Tilari actually, so we are not human. So, And still very much in love with their eyes and the way they hold each other's can't say anything. That parade was incredible, but I'm exhausted now, the woman says. I don't think I'm young enough to keep doing this anymore. No, says you're never too old to enjoy dancing, especially on a parade like that. It's what I tell her every year, the man says. Oh, please, I know I'm well past my prime age by now, but I'm fine with it. But still, it makes it harder to keep up the pace like you two were. Well, I am maybe, we say, but I... I was about to drop to my knees if I didn't take a seat here. <laughs> 
What matters is that you had fun no matter how long you could last on your feet. I'm tired too, you know. I, you still look like you could run a marathon after that. I'll say you truly do, dear, the woman says. And the man is like, it's very kind of you to keep my, your girlfriend company despite that. Oh, we're not, uh... Honey, it's not polite to assume two people are a couple just because they're alone together. Alright, I'm sorry. It's okay, we do look great together, huh? The woman not lets, allow, lets out a laugh, leaning a bit further against her husband's shoulder. That you do, that you do. <laughs> Want to head home now, honey? We should stop bothering them. You're truly not a bother, don't worry about that. They seem like a kind couple, one I wouldn't mind sitting and talking with, but the woman seems very tired and the man isn't faring any better. Yeah, thanks for the chat, Aya says. No, thank you for putting up with this seasoned couple. <laughs> Hope you get to enjoy the rest of your festival. Waving goodbye at us, the couple fades into the crowd as they leave the plaza. They were nice, we say. Yeah, they were. Ayana's voice sounds forlorn and the smile on her face fades from the fur for the first time all day. My chest tightens at her expression, the ease with which her smile faded worries me. What's wrong, we ask her. Nothing, it's just, well, that's what love is all about, isn't it? Romantic love, I mean, that partnership, that devotion. Don't you ever wonder if you'll find it someday, that one true love that just sweeps you off your feet? I honestly wasn't expecting Ayami to shoot me such a hard question. She had been laughing and dancing all day with me and now out of the blue, she's not. I think, I think everyone wonders about that sometimes. But it's not something we can know for sure until it happens, so there really isn't a point in worrying about it, is there? I know that, but do you ever wonder if you deserve it? Ayame? Using her full name gets her attention, the sadness in her eyes replaced by surprise at the change in my stance. Taking her hands in mine, I look straight into her eyes. I don't know anything about me to answer that, uh, but I know you. Anyone would be lucky to have your love, to have you. Damn, how can I even say those things with a straight face, she says. But thanks. I am a chuckle softly as she attempts to make a joke out of it, but the spark of happiness in her eyes gives me hope that at least part of her took my words to heart, and that's enough for now. Squeezing my hands gently, I am jumps to her feet, shaking off all the remnants of sadness. So I want to go for another round, or should we... Oh, what a beautiful and joyous young couple, the old lady says. She is interrupted by an elderly voice and we turn to find an old lady coming towards us from the opposite side of the parade. She is dressed like a fortune teller, draped fabric and golden beads making her look even more the part. Oh, we're not, uh... It is tradition to kiss under the boughs of a myrtle tree during the festival. It will bring happiness and fertility to your relationship for as long as your love continues to blossom, she says. I'm not sure how to respond to her nor of how to react when I notice Aya looking up to check the tree we're standing under. Ayame chuckles as she inspects the tree, a soft blush taking over her cheeks. I assume it is indeed a myrtle tree and as Nordis escapes my lips on Ayame looks back at the old day like she's mad. I guess this is why that couple from before thought we were together. She keeps staring at us, a shameless smile on her wrinkled face, and when neither of us makes a move, her eyebrows knit together in disappointment. It is tradition. Give the pretty lady a kiss, won't you? And I'm gonna kiss her, definitely. Gathering courage I didn't know I had, I turn to Ayame before I change my mind. The smile on her face is nothing if not the opposite from the furious blush taking place on my cheeks, but it only makes her look better. I lean in, placing a quick kiss on her cheek, her soft skin sending goosebumps down my arms. Her expression shifts into one of utter shock and I'm unable to look at her anymore. The old woman apparently pleased continues to wander down the street in search of another innocent pair to attack. She, uh, and Ayame is like, um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you wanted the kiss you just had to ask. I'm so, so, so sorry. I. We speak over each other and when I turn to look at her again, I notice her skin bathed in crimson blush now rivaling my own. Was it, uh, well, unexpected for once? Not really, but like, you know, oh great, she absolutely hated it and will kill me in my sleep, or I wouldn't mind having seconds, she says. Her words come out slurred, I was barely able to catch what she said, but I did and it only made me blush, my blush intensify. I'm not comparing you to food despite you being quite the, I mean, we should go, yes, laundry, <laughs> this way. <laughs> not waiting for my response, I am turns around and starts walking down the street. Stopping for a moment to grab my wrist and pull me along with she notices I hadn't go gone after her. A soft smile tugs at my lips, I can't imagine that she liked it. She, would she wouldn't mind seconds actually, so my lips still warm from her skin, I cannot tell but bother that despite how bold Aya is, a simple kiss on the cheek had been enough to throw her out of her orbit. 
Her fingers burn against my wrist, but I gladly follow her down the street. And we get to do the laundry together, which is a fun time. So after a couple of hours and quite a struggle with an old and almost broken washing machine, we walk out of the laundry shop. Switching my arms over my head, I let out a yawn, thinking back on the activities we took on earlier with a fond smile. It still gets my stomach to backflip if I think of the kiss I gave Aya, and I am terrified to understand why that is. We haven't talked about it since, but I cannot get it out of my head. Oh crap, it's already night time, she says. She's right, it's already dark outside. Calderon is going to throw a fit. All we were supposed to do was step out for a couple of hours and get the laundry done. Hey, at least we had fun, she says. Totally worth getting an earful from Calderon. I know for a fact that I had fun. Not only did we enjoy ourselves with the dance on the parade, but... My hand reaches to touch my lips to reassure myself that it actually happened. That I had truly kissed Aya. I must look like an idiot thinking about that kiss so much. It was just a chaste kiss on the cheek, but most likely it didn't even mean anything to Ayame. Hey! My eyes stamp to hers, and the look on them makes my mouth dry. My mouth is also dry, by the way. <laughs> Don't worry, your pretty little head. I had fun as well, she says. Shooting a wink at me, Ayame fixes the pack on her back and heads off to the ship. Uh, my stomach does yet another backflip as I make my way after her. It's like having a gymnast in there, honestly. Could she mean that she was enjoyed that she enjoyed it as much as I did? As we head into Opal's joint cabin towards the ship, leaving behind the city lights and the boisterous crowd that had taken over the streets, continuing their celebrations for the festival of Valen, a few specks of blinking lights catch my eye. I steer towards them, pebbles and sand crunching beneath my feet as I veer around the various piles of scrap metal scattering uh, through the lot. And we definitely go again to this little cacti field, or this big cacti field, with all of the beautiful cacti, cacti in bloom. So it doesn't take long until I've cleared the yard, finding myself in an open field with several cacti in full bloom, and I realize the specks of light are fireflies popping through the air like tiny yellow stars. I had no idea these little critters made it during this time of year. Ayama walks up next to me, pebbles cracking lightly under her boots. Is it related to the date chosen for the festival of Valen? I don't think so, but honestly, I'm terrible at biology. I'm a physics person. I'm the opposite, by the way. I really, I really love biology, so... A part of fireflies break from the posse and make their way towards us, spinning around each other in what I can only assume is a mating dance. The lights coming from them flicker like stars, so bright and fleeting. And I'm gonna look at Ayame flirty. Without noticing it, I turn to look at Ayame as their flickering lights surround us. And I don't regret it. Aya looks gorgeous under the light of the fireflies, the white highlights in her hair looking almost fluorescent, the shadows enhancing the angles of her face and her smile. It's enough to knock the breath from my chest. They're so pretty, Ayama says. They're not the only ones. Aya turns to me, blinking slowly, as she also seems to take in the effects of the fireflies have on my own features. My lips ache at the memory of the kiss I gave her earlier. Her soft, warm skin against my lips not an assassination I will so easily forget. Did it mean anything to her? Did that simple kiss make its way to the front of her mind at least once since then? Why do you seem to be thinking so much right now? I cannot stop thinking about... About what? You know. <laughs> I'd like you to tell me yourself. The way she says it makes my knees weak and it's the struggle to keep myself from falling under the pressure of her gaze and the sweet perfume coming from her. Her plump lips look so, so soft. I am a bite down on her lip just enough to make me wonder how it would feel to bite on them myself. Oh my god. You only stare at something this long if you're interested in getting a taste, you know. And what if I do? I am a takes a step closer to me, our chests almost touching each other. She looks at me with hooded eyes, shining bright under the moon and the fireflies. Then I'll just have to... <gasps> We're interrupted by the loud whooshing sound of the ship sliding doors opening, and we both immediately pull back with fierce and matching bruises. Um, a steering a straight into the firefly posse to walk us both back inside. Yes, she says. I would hate to get you in trouble with Calderon and yeah, let's go. We're bothering uh, the fireflies, maybe. And the fireflies even capable of being bothered? If I'm rambling, let's just go. <laughs> Ayama barely catches her breath while talking and immediately turns around, striking off to the ship. What would she... I have done if we weren't interrupted? Rubbing my eyes, I try to erase the memory of what had almost just happened from my mind, quick to follow her back onto the ship. Looking up to the starry sky and terranium moons, I am certain the captain won't spare us a lecture for being late, but it will be worth it. It was a fun day. I'm glad I got to enjoy the festival of Valen with Aya. 
Happy Valentine's Day. Oh my god, this was so fun, honestly. Aya has to be one of my favorite characters from all of them. I mean, I do enjoy all of the characters. Like, I don't have a single one who is, like, a least favorite or whatever. I enjoy them pretty much equally, but Ayame was one of the first ones that I actually wanted to romance. If you guys check out my main playthrough of the game, of the main game, uh, you will definitely see that I did flirt with Ayame multiple times, but I had to switch to June just because... I don't know, I don't even know why, oh, I remember why, because he was the first one we flirted with and I didn't want to like be, I didn't want to like stray away from, from him or whatever. But doing all of the routes is very like, uh, how should I say, fulfilling, I think is the right word for it. Because you get to see their different uh, char characteristics, you get to see their personalities, you get to learn more about them, their behavior. And Ayami is definitely one of the most fun to be around. She reminds me of Bash. Uh, I'm not trying to say that they're similar, I'm trying to, or like they're the same, I'm trying to say that they have very like um, uh, a similar type of personality where they're very upbeat, outgoing, very extroverted, and I really love that about her and about Bash as well. So I definitely really enjoyed this playthrough of this Ayame route. Um, so uh, please leave me a comment down below if you want to see something else in the Andromeda 6 universe from me. I can do like uh, a lot of different videos. I do have an upcoming video about... Uh, I actually, should I say it or should it be a surprise? I think I'm going to leave it as a surprise. But it is Andromeda 6 related, so uh, please subscribe if you want to get notified for that one. It's coming up very soon. And um, also, if you want to see like the episode 6 that is coming up very, very soon as well. You guys know the main game has 5 episodes as of now and the 6th one is going to be coming out. Like any day now, we're waiting like very, very uh, patiently or uh, rather impatiently. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Love you guys. <laughs>